Welcome to Codex History of Video Games. My name is Tyler Osby. And I'm Mike Coletta. And that was my best impression of, of the Peacemaker opening sequence, you know? You, you, have you seen that Dude, show? Dude, I haven't Peacemaker? seen that show yet. Oh, you got to at least watch the opening sequence. If, if anybody's listening to this hasn't watched the opening sequence to the Peacemaker, go do it right now. We will wait for you. It's okay. incredible. I'll make uh, sure but, to watch it then. Yeah, it is. Man, the show's great, but okay. But the, the opening sequence is maybe the best ever. This week on Codex, we're doing a little mailbag episode. Our 20th mailbag. Ever. 20th mail the big Dang. the big 20 the big 20 as they call it the big two zero that's what every podcaster calls it the big two zero that's true right? yep yep do you, do you want me to do you want to start with reeve's email yeah i'll kick it off with a with an email we got from reeve uh he says hi reeve from alaska when i went to new zealand this summer there's an eb games there also you should do an episode or two on gta i agree with doing an episode or two on we gta should. um he goes on to say did you hear that xbox is trying to get games on playstation PlayStation is better than Xbox. Strong stance. We love those hot takes here, though. It's what we, we need. sure do. We that love is. Those. And you know, from from that context, it sure seems like Microsoft themselves admit it. Yeah, they they're themselves their games admit on it. There. That's yeah, why they're that's doing true. it. Also, EB Games is a throwback. It's pretty cool. That's, that that's true. Still they're all GameStop now in the US. Yeah, I wonder if they just were only bought out in the US and not in australia or new zealand that's, excuse that's me probably true don't get those yeah. confused i heard that's a bad thing to get those confused that's true they that. get pretty upset about that they get upset about that but yeah that's exciting well yeah we want to cover gta i think gta just like with like halo it's it's the problem with doing studio versus game and we just need to make a decision you and i tyler yeah so we'll sit and down and talk about that gta series is one of if not the most influential series of all time i think like gta3 mm -hmm changed the game it literally changed the game for everything afterwards for sure and yeah i think it's fair to say that 100 percent. so i thank you for the email Reeve. we're gonna move on to the next one okay this is from mike mike c okay and it's not me i swear this is not me okay i don't I know, know you, don't man. you don't believe me but it's not me okay it's a really long email really great we read the email but we're going to focus on the three ideas that are thrown out here because they want to leave us with two thoughts and a show idea and i just it's, it's just too long to read so thank you for the email mike we read the whole thing but i swear we have to like cut down a little bit so one while i know you two are not big sports game guys it is worth looking into and talking about the most interesting thing about modern sports games is that every major one has incorporated heavy rpg elements in their story slash career modes with level grinding, side quests, decision, and dialogue trees. And yes, even the sports equivalents of collecting spider butts. The 2K basketball series is a huge example of this. They are literally set in an open world cities. And everything you do and the order you do it affects your play. There are literally skateboard and go-kart racing for influence and brand points. And past games had you forming relationships. Wow. Uh, you know, I, I do remember when I, one of the Maddens, I guess this was probably like five or six years ago, they came out with that story mode called Long Shot, and then mm -hmm. I think they've sort of done variations on that since then. I do remember like being interested in that and being like, oh, I should check this out, and then I think I, either I lost interest or maybe there was a reason I couldn't, like maybe the PC version didn't have it because console ver consoles always get the better versions of sports games. Maybe there's something weird happening like that, but th there was a reason that, that I ended up not doing it, but it did sound interesting to me. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's like it's taking that whole simple RPG mechanics of, like, Mario Golf for Game Boy Color that everyone here knows I love, and, like, actually making it about realistic sports things. Like, things you would do as a athlete, a professional athlete, which mm -hmm. I like. Yeah, level grinding. I like that. Oh, I have a button for that, remember? Here's, here's my... Oh, yeah. Get ready to grind, baby. That's Get ready good. to grind, baby. That's it. That's good. That's real good. All right, so the second point that Mike makes is Strong Museum of Play in Rochester, New York, where I teach, is the home of the National Video Game Hall of Fame. They have the greatest exhibits on the history of gaming, as well as full interactive gamified exhibits on video game genres and styles, as well as a rotating art and video game section that has covered some of the most beautiful games of all eras. I have taken my students this year and they love it, especially the 20-foot fully functional version of Donkey Kong. If you ever That's get cool. this way for comedy or fun or both, I recommend you make your way there. And then they gave us a little link to the Museum of Play. I love that. That's awesome. That's awesome, yeah. I've never done Rochester. Never done that as a, as a comedian. I've never been there. But maybe I will. Maybe I will now. 
So three, lastly, because of my lack of love for Super Mario Brothers 2 as a show idea, I would love to see a top 15 of reskinned slash hijacked games. Games that started out as some other IP or idea or concept and what got shipped was completely different. You could even include some arcade and PC, not just console. Thank you for your show. Thank you for reading my email. Can't wait for the DLC. Now it's time to beat those other shows on my backlog. Mike. Thanks, Mike. That's a great idea, by the way. 15 reskinned games. Yeah, I'm trying to think of some other games off the top of my head. We all know Super Mario Brothers 2. I want to say there's like that Disney... Oh, I've got... Uh, you just made the happen. plus... You made the thumbs up thing happen. Yeah, just, just made now. a thumbs up and then my camera froze. So mm-hmm. that's cool. That sounds, that sounds about right. I mean, you were you were really pushing it with the thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, I really, I really was. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll I'll look into that in a second. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but other other like reskinned hijacked games like uh, the Disney Extreme Skateboarding game that's like just reskinned Tony Hawk. Um, and oh, then yeah. I'm trying to think of some other games. I can't remember other games. There's definitely but, other ones on there. We just we would have to do some research for this one for sure. Yeah. I love that you turned your camera off and turned it back on, and it still has you frozen. That's what I know. I'm let me let me switch to I'll, I'll switch to this camera real quick. If it oh okay. man, it, and then I'll switch back. Well, this okay. camera is not working either. Oh man, I, I got like eight hundred cameras hooked up to my computer, and now I don't know what's like eight hundred different cameras. Oh, there you are. You're back. There we go. All right, we're back. We're back. Uh, I'm He's turning back. off the reactions thing because apparently that just couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle doing they, reactions. They, I don't even know why I was on. Didn't like it. They not have. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Mike included two pictures of the like the twenty foot Donkey Kong and stuff. I love this, but we're not gonna put them all on blast here. So what you want to do is, if Mike wants to share, he can do that in the Discord. That's how we'll do it. Okay. Good call. Good call. Or if Mike gives me permission, I'll put him in the Discord. So uh, with that though, do you want to move on to our man in Japan, Matt's email? Matt, we put up the Matt signal a couple episodes ago when we were talking about Persona 2 and uh, uh, Kotodama, which is uh, the, the concept in Japanese culture, but also in that game of, of basically like rumors have power. Anyway, Matt's, Matt, Matt's here to, to give us a lesson here. So um, it says, you raised the Matt signal and Matt has appeared. Now read the following in a Christian Bale Batman voice. All right. Ooh, this is your, do my, this is your time. Best, do my best. Okay. Uh, the literal breakdown of... I can't do it because it's hard to understand. <laughs> the literal breakdown of Kotodama is Kodo for spoken words and Dama for spirits. The gist of it is words have power, and so Japanese people would be very careful about what they say to others. If you say something bad, it'll come back to haunt you. If you say something good, you'll be blessed. This belief has kind of died down in modern times due to the proliferation of the internet. With online message boards and comment sections comes anonymity, and so people are more willing to say bad things because they don't think it'll ever come back to bite them. Uh, which I think is pretty universal of the human experience. This is my commentary. I think that's pretty universal of the human experience online. People 100%. get worse when they're online. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he says, the two of you proceed to discuss this, and while you're looking away, Matt disappears. That's going to happen. And I'm going to be yeah. like, where's Matt? Where did he where's go? Matt? He's, yeah, so we're discussing it, and now Matt's gone. He's just Batman. Matt's gone. He's just we gone. Batman. Yep. Yep. Matt's Batman. It's, it's but he'll be back now, with Guitar Hero. That's right. That's, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a deep cut. Okay. Yeah, the, deep next, cut. the next the uh, next email uh, is just says Dragon Ball Z. I don't know. I don't think they put their name in the email, so I'm not going to say their name. Okay. Um, I think. Or I guess I could just say their first name, right? I guess sure. I can do that. Yeah, just, this is from Damien. Hi, guys. I love the podcast. Thank you for your witty insights and bringing back memories. I was cleaning my bathroom on the weekend at the request of my wife. I was playing the latest Q&A episode to make this enjoyable, and then you both mentioned that neither of you had ever watched Dragon Ball. I nearly stopped cleaning. I'm sorry, guys, but neither of you should really go without watching at least Dragon Ball Z. It is iconic. The English version is what I watched, and the voice actors are so great. The music from Bruce Falconer is just epic. You can probably skip the original Dragon Ball and go straight into Z, in my opinion, but you really should stop and just binge it before my bathroom gets any dirtier. Also, as a topic, which video game character would you want to have as a school teacher? Maybe even special classes teacher. So, for example, we could have Professor Oak as the science teacher, though his practical experience might take like 30 hours. (laughs) Mm, Keep up mm. the good work. Biology Mm. teacher, Professor Oak? Professor Oak is biology teacher. I mean, I think for PE, I would want um, Mario to be my teacher because oh, okay. there's a lot of jumping and running involved. Yeah, true. Or like the mm-hmm. Master Chief himself, he could do PE. I feel like Master Chief though would be like, "Why am I teaching all these kids to play pickleball when we could be fighting the Covenant?" 
Yeah, I also feel like Master Chief probably has unrealistic expectations too because he's like eight feet tall and in his, mm -hmm. is lives in a suit of armor. And That's so true. he'd be like, why can't you just jump over the school building? It's easy. And we couldn't. I wouldn't be able it's to do also, that. It's also, I mean, realistically too, Mario could teach PE and biology because he is a doctor technically. That's true. And also Mario could teach... We got he could teach tennis because he was the tennis mm -hmm, referee mm -hmm, in uh, mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. NES tennis game. Well, I guess there's also Mario Tennis. Let's so go off that tennis, golf, basketball, snowboarding. Because uh, he was in SSX on tour, I think he's mm -hmm. in like, snowboarding in that. Uh, how to have a party? Because he parties. How to, how, how to throw a good party? This man has thrown ten great parties, at least That's ten true. great parties. Also, if you take Super Mario Brothers three and that it's all a play, acting. Theater. Yep. Mario can teach that too. Really, Mario is just your all around teacher. If you were going to get homeschooled by any video game character, you'd want it to be Mario. That's true. Yeah. He also taught he typing. He taught typing as yeah, well. Yeah, he did. Literally teaches typing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Mario's the one if you want an all around teacher. I think specialty teachers, though, is what I'm thinking about. Like, mm. like I mean, could it's not a character, but just. I guess it's Sid Meier from Civilization just teaching history. <laughs> He's probably just a good teacher, I bet. He's yeah, probably just yeah. an extremely smart teacher person. Uh, yeah, Sid Meier. Think or about Will other Wright. subjects. Will Wright has, like, real, like, teacher energy, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. Also, the uh, the character – well, okay. Math, physics, Gordon Freeman. Obviously, yeah. He's teaching. Be. He's teaching his physics math. Theoretical he, physicist. Yeah, that's right. He's gonna now again, way too overqualified for that role in a high school, but yeah, he'll yeah. do it. Well, all we ever saw him do at his job was push radioactive samples into energy beams. So he seems overqualified. That's actually his for that entire too. his entire class. You walk into the room and there's like thirty carts all lined up <laughs> next to things you push in, and that's what you do just for forty five straight minutes. <laughs> it's not an exciting class. Rip holes in the universe and aliens mm -hmm. come through. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah the resonance cascade that's what's gonna happen that's a good question yep. though i like that that's fun <laughs> do you want to read the next e also yes we'll watch dragon ball we're gonna watch dragon ball z tyler has a plan yeah i would very that is a show that i would very much like to have watched it's just time man i looked it up i think all the whole thing all told is like 100 hours with everything i think that might be including if you like skip recaps and look forward to the next episode because they spend like five minutes talking about what ha just happened and then five minutes talking about what's gonna happen and so that really only leaves like 15 minutes for real content. But I would love it if someone cut all of it together into a movie with no, none of those things. Just like you know 100 I mean? hour movie. Just one long movie that's every episode and then it just like cuts off and then it starts with the next one instead of doing the in-between stuff. Hmm. Yeah. And then probably some like through. filler episodes we can get out of here too. Yeah. It makes it very bingeable in a way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd be down for that. I'm sure somebody's done something like that. Someone's got to do something like that. Right. You could also try to probably do some sort of tool, like an AI tool, now to be like cut out all of these sections. <laughs> oh, probably, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, right. I'll read the next one from Matt Matthew. Mm -hmm. uh, the the subject of this email is Steam Deck. Hi, I'm Matt from Georgia, US. I found your podcast last August 2023 when I started an overnight job, and it is a, a great informative time passer. I'm going to keep this short. Did you know that you can emulate up to the N Nintendo Switch on your Steam Deck? You can also play PC Game Pass on it as well. Not sure if you talked about this yet, as I'm only on episode 233 as of today. Keep up the good work. Spider boot. Little boot. Not spider butt. Boot spider boot. Boots. Little boot emoji. Uh, I did know that. I have played Switch games on Steam Deck, uh, and it's pretty great. Obviously, legally purchased Legally uh, games. purchased copies. Uh, and the, Yuzu is in a little bit of uh, legal trouble right now, the, the, one of the Switch emulators. Um, notably only one of the switch emulators is in legal trouble though um so uh that's interesting but yeah it, it works great uh i i have done that love it uh pc game pass is a little weird on steam deck if you install windows then it just works like you would expect um if you keep steam os on there you can't download the games and like play them from the steam deck you can stream them like xcloud style uh but you can't actually like download them uh, unless things have changed in the last i don't know not not that long of time uh, yeah, you can do Windows on your Steam Deck, which I think Ooh. more people should do. Yeah, because the, the Steam OS is kind of limiting of what you can do on it, right? It is. Steam OS is really, really good. Like, it's really well integrated. Like, it works great. Obviously, it works out of the box with it on, on uh, all the hardware and stuff. That's great. Like, it's, it's a really good experience. Um, you're just limited by, because um, it's Linux-based, so games that don't work in their translation layer that they call Proton, um, you're kind of just out of luck. And then Game Pass games 
and then it's all all kind of wibbly wobbly trying to get other other stores on there that aren't Steam. Um, that you just you have a little bit better time if you're if you have Windows on there. But Steam OS is pretty great, and I think it only gets better. Nice. Yeah, I want to look yeah. into it. I'm, I mean, I haven't gotten a Steam Deck yet, but I'm kind of heard rumors there's a new one potentially. So I'm like. Yeah, I mean, wait. there's always there's always something around the corner. Yeah, I mean, there's also like the Switch Two or whatever been rumored forever. Yeah. We'll see, but yeah, yeah. I, and it has it has been a couple of years for the Steam Deck, so they're probably at least thinking about the new one. They did just come up with the OLED screen one though, which uh, is a, a little bit better battery life, so runs a little cooler and it has way better screen. The OLED screen is, uh, from what I understand, very good. So, oh, nice. Yeah, sorry. It a is a good time to pick up a Steam Deck. By. I think I gotta. I gotta fix the motorcycle we're gonna say there's a motorcycle here and everyone's gonna be like wow i didn't even hear it because my guy i didn't it. hear it no it came Was it on in, my side I, or your side no it came in through my microphone 100 oh, okay. percent. yeah real okay. real loud yeah <laughs> no i uh yeah i i want to i want to do a steam deck or a like a new switch i, I don't want to get both i have to like choose and so i'm kind of like waiting because i feel mm. like we're on the cusp of either one of those though it's been long enough that we're on the cusp yeah, yeah, I think if you got to choose because you already have a gaming PC, I think you got to go Switch. Yeah, my my old Switch is definitely like feeling it. It's feeling yeah. it a little bit. It's ha- it's going yeah. through it. It's going through its feelings, which is fine. Yeah. That's part of the reason why people love emulating uh Switch games on their PCs, uh legally purchased, of course. Um because uh they actually run better. Like you can play them at 4K, you can bump bump the frame rate up on a lot of Switch games like they're ju- it's, it's like generally a better experience. Ooh, well, I could buy the Switch game legally, and then I could emulate it on my PC. Mm-hmm. Just right. the that, same that, thing. That's what I do, actually. I have a, a shelf full of uh, Switch games that I have not really played Unopened? On <laughs> uh, well, I had to open them to legally rip them myself. Uh, yes, 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 yes. As so, always, as always. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, the next email, thank you, Matt, by the way, is from another Matt. We have multiple. We have three Matt. we got a lot of Matt's. Mm-hmm. It's from Matt S. Hi, Mike and Tyler. Long time listener. First time emailer. I have been listening to your show for the last few years, and now I am starting to go through the whole series again. And let me tell you, the second time is even better. It is so much fun to listen to the what have you been playing during the episodes. It is interesting to hear what both of you were playing then and oh, playing. And then I think about what I was playing around that time and then old nostalgia gears start turning. All of the Chuck E. Cheese and mall talk remind me of a much simpler time, and it always brings me up if I am having a down day. I would really just like to say thank you so much for everything you do, for everything you both do, and all the hours of entertainment you have provided me over the years. I appreciate this podcast the most out of the ones I listen to because it seems, it really seems like you both are very passionate video game enthusiasts. We really are. We're so into it. Now, I have a couple episode ideas. I think it would be interesting to talk about rare games. Rare as in hard to find games and the origins to why they are. That's really good. I really like that idea. Obviously, some are rare because they are just old and not a lot are in circulation. But there are also a lot of cool stories as to why some newer games in the last 15 years or so are rare and why they still hold their value. Another episode idea would be the modding scene. A quick talk about how older consoles can be modded with hardware or software mods. I have been getting into it the last year, and I have modded quite a few of my consoles and gave them new life. My Wii is able to play games even with its broken disk drive. I replaced my 22-year-old hard drive in my original Xbox, and I don't have to use a disk drive and that I am always worried about breaking. My PS3 Slim now runs cooler and more efficient, all from simple mods. It's a great way to preserve old game collections. Thank you for reading my email, and thank you again for everything both of you do to get me through my days. Spider Butts, Matt S. Thank you, Matt a nice email also two very good ideas yeah i i would love to do like you could do a we could do an episode on each system and in fact Mm -hmm. if you are interested in in the history of modding scenes uh modern vintage gamer has uh several videos on different modding scenes um his videos on the xbox modding scene are especially great because he was a major player in the xbox modding scene um so he's got like videos that are called like uh, all those emulators you played on your original xbox like i made them uh, which is true. He he ported a lot of those the emulators that people use uh, back when it was uh, the the original Xbox's modding heyday. Um, so I love anyway, that. Yeah, he has a lot of great videos on that. Uh, he's a lot of great videos in general, but uh, uh, the Xbox ones in particular are great because he directly participated in that scene heavily. Dude, I, I think I'm gonna like watch that today. That sounds really fun. Yeah, man, I'm into that. I'm into that. Well, yeah. uh, 
also to note about rare games, which I find interesting, because um, I, I have some knowledge in this because of my quest to get the N64 games. Um, some of the rarest Nintendo 64 games, and this is an interesting tidbit, is the are the ones that were in blockbusters. Because the blockbuster N64 games that were used in the demo machines all have oh. a not for resale sticker on the label. And just that different label makes them rare. So the most expensive N64 game, the last time I checked, it could have changed, was Clay Fighter 63 and a half Blockbuster Not for Resale Edition. And that sold for mm. $1,500. Granted, this is a price that was probably about a year ago, and it's most likely gone down because the Nintendo 64 prices are crashing, which I love as someone who's Yeah, classic video them. game prices are, are crashing a bit. They, yeah, they, which I they went off during COVID times and they're mm -hmm. kind of coming back down to earth. Honestly, I'm love I'm fine with that because I want to yeah. collect them because I actually want them. I don't want to resell them. So mm -hmm. owning those as like a reason to own them is exciting to me. Um, but that is the most expensive game for 64. And so a lot of times like it's a manufacturing issue too. Like if they just didn't make a lot of copies, like I know I've, I've harped on this for so long, but that, Nintendo DS version of Resident Evil Deadly Silence I got rid of and I sold with my DS is rare and costs $100 because they just didn't make a lot of them. They hmm. just didn't make the game. So, yeah. yeah, that's another reason that we could kind of get into it. But I would love to do this because I love rare video games. I love it. I love it so much. So, both of those topics, pure bangers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Love it. Do you want to read Martin from Oregon's email? Yes, I do. Martin says... Uh, the, the subject is Polybius. Uh, Martin says, hey, guys, it's your favorite listener from the Beaver State. Martin from Oregon here, uh, or the Duck State, depending on which Ooh, side of... Wow, don't start a fight. Mm -hmm. Sorry, as a person who is from Washington, I have no... I don't care about... Anything. But you have the knowledge, though, the street But knowledge. I do have the knowledge of, of, of Oregon. Um, I'm glad you guys made an episode about Polybius, the game designed to reprogram the minds of Portland youth. I'm originally from Portland, and I have a unique experience with this topic. My dad actually went to school with the guy who developed this game in the late 70s, early 80s. He said he was commissioned by the CIA or something. After the game was decommissioned, my dad actually ended up with the original arcade, ca arcade cabinet, which is currently sitting in his garage. I would show you pictures of it, but every time I try to take a photo, it scrambles whatever device I'm using. I've actually played the game a few times, and whenever I do, it makes me hallucinate that whatever game I play for the next month is Polybius, no matter what game it actually is. It's super inconvenient. Anyway, I just thought you guys would be interested in this. I am not making any of this up. Spider Butts, <laughs> Martin from Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, Martin, I wish you could get a picture of that. Yeah, this time I mean, we're in Portland, Mike. We'll we're come, going. We'll, we'll take a picture, and I'll just people we'll show up. But I, I don't know, I'll be on the podcast. Like, I tried to take a picture. It broke my phone. It scrambled. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Ah, oh, dang. <laughs> Man, Martin, you're uh, – we're, 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 we'll be I there. Like that. I like that email, though. I'm a big fan of it. I'm a big Me fan. Me too. <laughs> All right. We have one more email to read before we move into our Discord mailbag section. And this is from uh, Duckasaurus Rex from Idaho. Great name. Solid name. Second attempt is the subject line. All right, guys. I realize my mistake. My recommendation to everyone, maybe make sure you're fully caught up on episodes before writing in. That way you can avoid asking a question that is then answered in the very next episode. <laughs> I just want to say I thoroughly enjoy every episode. I consider myself to be a passionate gamer, despite never having enough time to play as much as I would like. That is the most relatable thing that it might True. be ever said on this podcast. Mm -hmm. My kids and I love watching game vi gaming videos on YouTube. One of our favorite channels to watch, you can say the title of the channel if you want, is Game Sprout. I said it. I'm not afraid. They do a lot of fails or glitch videos. This got me wondering, what's your guys' favorite glitch? Was there a game you guys had or played that was so glitchy it was virtually unplayable? Also, episode idea potentially, the history of cheat codes, Keep up the amazing work, Duckasaurus Rex from Idaho. Those are two Ooh. great, well, a great idea and a great question. History of cheat codes is a great I, idea. It is a great idea. I think for me, the glitch that I will always love is the duplication glitch in Pokemon Red, Blue, or Green. I was, you know, that was my go-to also, Missing now. That was my first, yeah, that was my first ever glitch, like yep. ever learning about it. And I feel like for a lot of children that age, it was their first ever glitch in gaming. Yeah. So that's the one that's close to my heart. Yeah. And it was so it was so beneficial because of the duplication thing. But then there was also like this this tempting fate aspect of it, where like if you caught missing no, 
a lot of weird stuff would start happening in your game because mm-hmm. of just glitches, not because yeah, but just because it's it's glitchy. And so there's like this just like just fight missing though to get the the duplication glitch, but like don't catch him though. But Mm-hmm. Everybody it, we caught him at least once. We all did it. We all, we all did caught it. Him. We Some all of us had saves. a worse time than others when that happened. Sometimes it just gets glitchy, and if you release him, it's fine. Sometimes it ruins you, like just you lose your save file. It, I wonder if my save file is on my Pokemon Red still. Probably not. Battery probably died a long time ago. But po- Pokemon Red might be okay if it were gold and silver. Almost certainly not. Okay, yeah. I'll t- I'll check it out. I have it over there, so I'll, I'll look into that. But yeah, favorite glitch is Masigno. If I play a game and it's that glitchy that I notice it, I think it probably makes me stop playing it. But I do love me a good Skyrim bug. Mm. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of a good... When you hit something and it ragdolls across the map, big fan of that. <laughs> yeah. Huge fan. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like games that were so glitchy that they were basically unplayable. Um, I, I feel mean... Like- wasn't there I one might recently? not have started playing it if I heard about it. I feel like if it was so bad it was unplayable, I probably would have heard about it before playing it, and then I would have just not played it. But yeah, there was hmm. one that would be a good one to think about. Was... Wasn't there a game recently that was so bad at first? It was like a thing in the news. I mean, Cyberpunk comes to mind. That oh was yeah, like... Cyberpunk was pretty bad. That one's just unfinished. I mean, I guess mm-hmm. what's the difference between a buggy game and unfinished? Like kind of the same mm-hmm. thing, I guess. Um, Suicide Squad, I think, uh, Kill the Justice League. Was that buggy or was it just not good? Was it just bad? I think it was just not well received. It was just bad. But it also had some bugs. I don't know. It wasn't It wasn't enough. It, I think it was a combo of both. Oh, it did have the bug where you got the achievement for beating the game as soon as you booted it up. That's that's, that's kind of bug right. That's kind of bug right there. I that's think. pretty funny. Yeah. Maybe they're just trying to they did it on purpose. They were like everyone's the winner if you play this. Yeah. Game. Here you I go. remember when Arkham Knight came out uh, and they actually removed it from Steam because of how bad like how unplayable it was on PC. Oh wow. They, yeah, they took it off of Steam for like 6 months. It was like a long time. They just noped it right out of there. That's crazy. Yeah, it was really bad. Yikes. It's it's better now. It's fixed now, and a lot of it is fixed by just brute forcing it with better hardware too. Just also gotcha. it crashed a lot, which they fixed, but it also just ran really poorly on the hardware at the time, um, which ten years later is less of a problem, even if they never fixed that. Yeah. Well, thank you for the email, though. That's really good. That's a really good ideas. Like big fan. Thank you so much, Duckasaurus Rex. Big fan. Do we want to move on to the Discord questions? This is where it gets real, Tyler. Sure. Because we had a lot of questions in Discord this week. Yeah. A lot of big questions, too. Like, opinion questions. I wouldn't necessarily say hard-hitting questions, but still a lot of time questions. Yeah. I'm trying to... I'm gonna, I say that now, and I'm, I think our listeners are going to treat it as a challenge. And then next time we do a mailbag, they're going to say some really hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> the first one's from Mo. I'll get us started here. Codex covers a lot of video games, of course, but what are some of your favorite movies or TV shows? Sometimes it's nice to take a little breather from the games and binge on some movies or TV. What are some of your favorite genres of movies and TV? Hmm. So I have I have a couple different things here if you want to think about it for a second, Tyler. Okay. I love, even though certain aspects of it didn't necessarily age well, The Sopranos is in my top three TV shows of all time. Mm -hmm. always i love the sopranos uh i say it doesn't age well because there's certain aspects of it like do you know what a show is trying to be like really realistic Mm -hmm. um even if that thing that they're being realistic about is like really uh upsetting (laughs) i guess Mm -hmm. or uh controversial i feel like hbo does that a lot in their shows especially their early shows they were trying to be gritty like i'm thinking about oz too oz is Mm -hmm. a show that you're like oh like you couldn't like i couldn't finish it i started it and i'm like i can't do this um but sopranos does that a couple times and it's hard to watch but most of the time i really really enjoy sopranos um the other shows i love it's like hard to watch because it's like offensive now in a way that like it's so yeah so this like i'm just gonna say what it is so i'm not not say it but like this is the topic they're covering like in like east coast italian mafia racism like Mm. racist like it's pretty racist right and that's not no one's disputing that in history okay that was a thing that they did the way they represent it in the show is so much that i feel like they're going overboard with it Uh, like like they could have brought it up but they say a bunch of things they don't need to say essentially Uh, you know like that kind of thing um where they're like they're going really hard into it 
And like, I'm we, like, we get it. We get it. We get yeah, it. Yeah, it's like yeah. you made your point. You made the point that you were trying to get across, but you just kind of went so far into it that I'm like, were you enjoying it? Like, that's what it kind of felt mm. like, where it was yeah. like a little too much. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't think it's like an acting thing. I think it's like a writing thing more than anything. Um, what, what do I know, though? I don't write television shows. I love the Lord of the Rings movies. And my favorite movie, probably one of my favorite movies of all time, is the, the movie Life Aquatic. Um, mm. with Wes Anderson I love that movie I don't if you to ask me why I love that movie I would tell you I'm not sure but when I'm sad I watch that movie and it makes me happy so that's one of my answers that's a movie I would like to watch I tried to watch it one time like when it was new so this was like I don't know 20 years ago probably mm-hmm. uh, maybe not quite um, I had a copy of it on my iPod video and that movie is extremely widescreen extreme oh, like it's, yeah. it's, it's extreme it widescreen it's like like watching a movie on a on like an ultra widescreen monitor so it is an ipod video screen is already only like two inches big and fully half that screen on the top and bottom is black bars because of how wide the movie is so i watched like 15 minutes of it and i was like i can't see what's happening and I, anyway, you should watch it good. you should I watch know. it and let me know what you think because it is one of my favorite movies i like it because stylistically it's beautiful. I think that it's, it's a beautiful movie, but also like the story of watching this person change throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. I really like, I really like, and yeah. I, I, and that's kind of the most I can say without spoiling anything, but I just really enjoy that. I also, as far as movies that are bad that I love and I will always love, and this comes with Helldivers, I am a huge fan of the original Starship Troopers movie with Paul Verhoeven. Is that movie I, considered bad? I thought it was uh, I mean, generally it's, beloved. It, it's it's beloved. Seen it. As in, it's like, but if you, if, if a normal person watches that movie, they would probably think it's bad. But I okay. think it's amazing satire. It's just amazingly well done as far as being satirical. And it's just, it's a good movie. And I love those. So those are some movies I like. What about you, Tom? Okay. Uh, well, as far as favorite TV shows go, uh, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul kind of fight for the number one spot. Uh, Breaking Bad for doing all of the, the things it did to like shake up TV and then Better Call Saul for being better than Breaking Bad at doing those things. Uh, but it wasn't quite as revolutionary as Breaking Bad was. Um, I also love... I, I, where I've been going through a phase of like watching old 90s sitcoms. I watched... I love Cheers. Frasier's great. Uh, Seinfeld, we're moving through right now, and Friends also. Um, some of those age have episodes that don't age as well as other things. Um, that's okay. It You know, it's just the way it was. Um and uh so for movies my favorite movie of all time is the prestige christopher nolan's Ooh, the prestige that's a good movie that's my favorite movie of all time um i also love uh some some weird movies like a scanner darkly did you ever watch that movie that's i did movie. watch that movie yeah. i love that movie i love that movie i love philip k dick stories like his uh, uh sci-fi he's uh, like a classic sci-fi writer so i love movies that are based on that um terrible titles for all of his books that's why they had to change the titles for almost all of the movies they made up based off of his books um and yeah uh 30 rock loved 30 rock that was oh one of my, 30 my rock is great even like yeah 30 rock i mean parks and rec also has a special yeah. place in my heart um i was gonna say do you want to say your controversial opinion about your favorite batman movie on this podcast my favorite batman movie is yeah. lego batman that's right. This is this is a, this is a point of contention because you will argue that Lego Batman is the best Batman movie. It is the best Batman movie, and I will stand by that. I think Lego Batman is a perfect movie, flawless, no notes. I love it. I, I love that movie. Do you want to hear my version? I also forgot my favorite movie actually that might be up there as far as like the one to take over Life Aquatic as what I think is the perfect movie. Mm. Muppet Treasure Island. Oh, I, Muppet I, Treasure no, Island been... has a lot of stuff going on in it. Okay. It's got like because they're on the main story, but there's also a subplot of all these rats going on a cruise, and that's what makes the movie fantastic to me. So <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. And Michael Caine can plays that just brilliantly. Oh, that's in Muppet Christmas Carol. Oh, that's Michael Christmas Caine. Carol. Okay, sorry, sorry. Tra- yeah, Tra- Tra- which Tra- is also yeah. great, also a great also movie. A great movie. Yeah. But Tim Curry is Long John Silver at Muppet Treasure Island, and he okay. just crushes it because he's Tim Curry. He murders everything he does. It's amazing. True. You know, yeah. it's a, it's a great movie. I. I'll watch. I love the Muppets also, so I'll watch any Muppet movie. I'm biased, but yeah, I just wanted you to say your Batman opinion on here, but so we could get some hot take I stand by it. from people. I stand okay. by it. I also did really love the new Robert Pattinson Batman video, video Batman movie. Um, I, I liked it too. 
I think it kind of tells one of the best. Like the the Dark Knight trilogy is whatever. It's a masterpiece for its own reasons. It's great. Like I'm not I'm not saying those are bad mm-hmm. movies, but uh, I think the newest Batman movie was a true detective story that we have never seen in Batman on on screen. And that's like a big part of Batman's character, actually, is that he is the world's greatest detective. And that's mm-hmm. what he does in The Batman. He's not great at it. He's still kind of new at it, but uh, he, he actually does it. And I don't think any of the Nolan movies really have much detective stuff going on. Um, and I don't think any of the Tim Burton, Joel Schumacher ones did either. So, Yeah, I I think for the, the Christopher Nolan movies, it was kind of well known that, that Dark Knight is the best one. But mm-hmm. Batman Begins is also a really good movie. You know, also I really just, yeah. I, I think they just really kind of like the ending just, it didn't hit as hard as I wanted it to, which is yeah. a story of like Game of Thrones, everything, you know, everyone has expectations and fulfilling those expectations is extremely difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Dark Knight so, Rises was okay too, but it was not, it was definitely the weakest of those three. Do you want to read the next one on the list here? Yeah. Uh, from Gur Rocks. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gur Rocks 001 says, my son who I listen to your podcast with in the car, would like to know when you'll do an episode on his favorite game, Minecraft. Uh, I don't. That would be on you, I think, Mike, because you have spent yeah. infinity times more time in Minecraft than I have. Yeah, so I'm the big, I'm the big Minecraft um, head. I bought Minecraft in 2008. I got it really early. Dang, I had the alpha. Really early. I had the alpha version. I played it alone. I didn't tell anybody. This was kind of like the one thing I that feel like I was like you should like, be a billionaire because of that. Like Notch is a billionaire for making Minecraft. You probably yeah, should be for playing it that early. I played the game when there were only 3 enemies in it. <laughs> <laughs> or it was just the zombie, the creeper and the skeleton and that was it. Um, I actually had a, like a mountain fortress. I really liked. It, it was fun. Um I I would do this. I feel like we're going to, it would be our, one of our epics in a way, as Mm. far as, and I say that as in, it's going to be a long, long road because we would have to discuss not only Mojang and Notch and those days, but we'd also have to move into the Microsoft days and how that went down. We would also be covering some things I feel like in production that are going to borderline on more of like the political side than we usually go in a way. Wow. Cause, okay. cause, this is cause divided, like, man. cause like there's like a thing with like notch <laughs> the creator <laughs> being a not great person and doing some things to his employees when he sold the company that are not oh, great that yes. we're going to probably have to bring up. And it's going to kind of be a, uh, I don't know if political is the right word. I guess it's going to be kind of a corporate greed situation mm. is what it's going to be. And also, like, we're going to have to talk about billionaires, which is not really something we really talk about on this podcast that often. But mm. I would be remorse. Remiss? Remorse? I don't know. Remiss? I can't. You would remiss? have remorse if you didn't? I would have remorse not to co- if we didn't cover that in, in a way. Because I think it's a big telling of the story about, yeah, Minecraft was an indie game by this company Mojang. Everyone was super into it. Microsoft bought it. I would argue they actually did some really good things with it when they bought it, so it's not like a terrible situation. But as far as how the people at Mojang were treated when they Mm. left is something I feel like we would have to talk about. Oh, that's too bad. So it's kind of like, it's kind of hard. It's another reason I haven't touched it. And it's it's weird because it's a a, a cute kid's game. (laughs) A A cute building game that we all love. But I feel like it's got some undertones to the story that we need to cover that are a little heavier than what we usually cover. So, sorry for that long-winded diatribe, but hey, you know, whatever. Well, there's more. Question from me, Gur, rocks. Um, Games like Minecraft and Bethesda's recent catalog happily allow and even lean into user-generated content via mods. Do you think it's a good business sense to lean in and help curate mods and ease the process of downloading and implementing them? Or do you think it's lazy and even exploitative game development to rely on your users to keep a game alive like that? That's I have a thoughts on question. I have thoughts I on this. I hear your thoughts. I have to let Delilah in. She's been meowing this whole time. Are we okay with this? We have yes, to do yes. this. Yes, no, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Let, let, let okay. the cat in. Let the cat in. Here we go. <laughs> Still doing it. You could you could probably hear her now. <laughs> you, yeah, we could hear her before too. Yeah, she's, she was. She, she sounds was like really... a human making like pretending to be a cat. Yeah, she's she she really is. She just came in here and just went to sleep immediately. What a jerk. Okay, she just wanted her <laughs> bed. Okay, so 
here's my thoughts on this. Uh, I don't think Minecraft mods or Skyrim mods are nexus necessarily like exploitive. I think Roblox is one of the biggest scams that has been going on for so long that for some reason no one has touched. And and I'm using the term scam allegedly. I guess I should say allegedly a scam. I should say that for legal reasons. But I don't know if they go after people. But the fact that they're kind of promising people in a way like you're going to become a game dev and you're going to make money when statistically that does not seem to be the case. And on top of that, a lot of the people that are doing this are children. So it's kind of like child labor. It just, mm. it, the whole thing feels a little sketch. Is what I'm saying. So that's a whole nother bucket of worms. You know, it feels <laughs> just, like you're misleading into misleading children into making games for you. On exactly. The promise that they may one day become game developers. Yeah. And there are people that have become game developers from Roblox. So I don't want to yuck anyone's yum. Okay. I yeah. guess, but they're realistically, the chances are so low of that happening because it's an oversaturated market that it just comes off as people working for free to get nothing while the only person making money and not a person is, is Roblox mm -hmm. or people that are organizing this whole thing and then selling them and they're the, taking all the money. There's a yeah. lot of shady stuff going on in Roblox and I, I'm not knowledgeable enough to really dive into that kind of thing. Two yeah. topics, two hot topics Whew. for Rocks well, today. On on the the topic of like Bethesda and and games that are sort of famous for having great modding scenes, which I think is a little bit different than Roblox, which is like yeah. that's the sell. Is that it's that it that it's that with game like games have been getting mods for a hundred years. Like as long as games have been a thing, like people modding them, right? Like Ms. Pac Man was like it was a game mod, right? Like mm -hmm. um, so so mods uh, in, are not inherently exploitative. Um, I do think I can tell you that uh, I get sort of upset when I see game developers actively trying to prevent people from modding games, um, like especially single player games or or multiplayer games um, where there's not like a competitive integrity issue. Obviously, like I don't want people cheating in in games where where uh, competition is like the point of the game, right? Like that that's not what I'm talking about. But like mods um, that add maps or content, PC games uh, have long relied uh, relied is maybe not the right word but has long enjoyed like good modding scenes for a lot of games like uh quake quake games counter-strike itself was a mod right uh the unreal tournament scene like there's all of these games that like had have great map scenes and mods and like that stuff is really cool i so i don't like when game developers try to actively squash that stuff which they sometimes do especially in these days um i don't think they should necessarily feel like obligated to like support it either like i i I get that that's like a lot of work to to like make sure that that's doable. Um but I think it is really cool when somebody like Bethesda like makes their own sort of mod manager, right? Where they say, "Hey, we know people like to do this. We're not only not going to block it, we're going to actively encourage it and like have a good time with it." And like you can play Skyrim mods on your Xbox now. Uh that kind of stuff with limitations, I think. But like I think that's really cool. Um and I don't see it as relying on the community to to like to keep a game alive a game like skyrim too is not a live service game right like they don't they're not under no obligation to continue adding content to a game like skyrim yeah After you you paid your 60 bucks for the game you got the game maybe they put out some like bug fixing patches maybe you buy like a dlc pack later that's fine um but i wouldn't consider them relying on on the community to keep that game going like the game doesn't have to keep going if the game goes away they still made their money right so they're for not sure. really relying on it um, I think them encouraging it means that every time they come out with a new game, there's like sort of a, a modding scene ready to go for it because they know they'll be supported well or or at least not actively fought against, uh, which I think does work out in Bethesda's favor, especially when like those like mod videos go viral on TikTok or whatever. Like, I think that's fun. Um, so I, I don't have a problem with that. I get, it did get a little weird when they were trying to sell sell mods for a little while, right? Like that got a little weird. They were going to split it with the mod. Make, I don't know. That was like... Once you start involving money into that part, then it starts to it become like, weird. okay, the, the incentives are weird. Like, free mods are like, hey, we're doing this for the love of the game. You know that the people involved, like, they're doing it just because they love it, right? They want to be there. When money starts getting involved, then it starts to be like, oh, the actual goal here is not necessarily to make a mod that people are going to enjoy. It's to make money. And that's like, that starts to feel bad. Um, so that's when you get into, like, the Roblox stuff, right? Like, I would say they rely on their community to do stuff for free for them, and that feels pretty bad. Yeah, um, 
I mean, most mods are like, like Skyrim mods or like Baldur's Gate 3 mods. They're labors of love. Like people are going yeah. into it, making these things, knowing they're not making money. Like they're volunteering their yeah. time and they're knowingly doing that. Yeah. Roblox, and some of them maybe have Patreons or whatever, and that's, that's fine. Yeah. But, but Roblox is just like, hey, go ahead and make this for us and you might get paid for it depending on how many people play it so yeah, we're gonna make money for sure you're mm-hmm. only gonna make money if we make like uh, enough that it makes it worthwhile for us to give yeah. you some too. also you're a child <laughs> <laughs> yeah which is really dicey yeah. <laughs> yeah so wow a heated question okay big big heated question let's move on to something a little bit more light shall we okay, okay this next sure. one is from dave c it appears like Amazon's taking on Amazon's take on bringing Fallout to the small screen is getting positive first looks. What is a video game or game series you'd like to see made into a film or TV adaptation if it was made well? And one, I love the Fallout trailer. Tyler watched it right before I this I just watched it moments recording. before this podcast. I love it. I think it looks I think it looks great. Yeah, not to uh, dox myself, but it comes out on my birthday, so everyone should know that's my birthday gift to you—is me giving the world follow. Oh, <laughs> TV thank you. Show. Hopefully, it's I good. didn't. I, I didn't do good. anything. I didn't do anything. <laughs> uh, also, the whole series drops day up, which I love. I'm like, let's binge it. You know, I actually have. A, I'm taking a time off the next day so I can binge it. My plan is to just nice. watch the whole Fallout show on the next day. Uh, but so for. Th- this I had a couple ideas, and Tyler supports one of my ideas a lot. I was excited because I feel like I looped Tyler. In. The first one is a so-so idea, that being Destiny. I like the idea of people coming back to life after dying a long time ago to fight in this war. I think that's a cool thing you could explore in a TV show or a mini series, maybe. But my big one, my big hit, is Bioshock during Rapture's good times, like a prequel to the events of bioshock one where we are in rapture we are seeing it thrive and we are going to watch it fall that's what i want to see awesome plasmids people like all that stuff andrew ryan all all that i want to see that i really want to see that yeah oh and and the visually it would just be like stunning right you get this like great gatsby sort of vibe going on like this art deco thing like oh Oh, man dude that'd be really cool Tangent time. You ready? Hit the button. <laughs> so nice, dude. My co- my uh, company, I, w- I went into our new office for the first time. It's in downtown Seattle, and it has an Art Deco theme. And I turned to my coworkers, and I'm like, they might as well write, no gods or kings, only man, on the top of the elevator <laughs> bank. Because it so much looks like Bioshock. It's ridiculous. I It's fun. It's fun when you find that architecture style in the real world. Next time you're in your city or wherever you are, look for Art Deco stuff, because you're going to be like, that's Bioshock there Mm -hmm. it's fun that was my tangent that was my whole thing there's no closing tangent button do you want to just push it again very good yeah yeah i just think that'd be a good tv show yeah i'm generally like not a fan of the idea of like just directly adapting stories told in video games to the screen i think uh, a good a good exception to that was um the last of us show i think that that game really feels like they had a story that they sh- that they like shoehorned a game into, um, which is fine. The story is fantastic. The game is also f- fine. It is it is good and acceptable. I, I, it's not really groundbreaking in any way. That really the big part of that game is is the story. So telling that in a TV show form, I think uh, worked out pretty well for them. Most of the time, though, I think um, good video games with good stories for video games don't really adapt very well to to the thing like when you said bioshock at first i was like i think bioshock has to be a video game because you get the whole uh um would you uh, kindly would you kindly that whole twist hits so much harder because it's a video game and because you've been playing this game you've been actively doing the things it wouldn't hit as hard in a tv show unless they could somehow warp it into like a commentary on tv shows instead of video games because it's an actual video game commentary i think which doesn't make sense in a tv show so if, if they did it in a way that made it be a commentary on video game or on TV shows, maybe you could do it. Um, but I that'd think, be cool. Yeah, if it was like a commentary on TV shows, it's like the nature of TV shows. How they would yeah. do it, I have no idea. But that would be yeah. really cool. Yeah, but y- y- that would be how to make something like that work. Um, I do think uh, uh, 
like you said, doing something else in the same world. That's why I think the Fallout show looks really interesting because it does. It, it takes place in Los Angeles, so it doesn't follow any of the storylines of any of the Fallout games. Uh, I don't think any of the like the first two games. I don't think they take place in Los Angeles, but they don't really follow the storyline of any of the the games. Um, but that world is so rich and so full of opportunities to tell cool stories that uh, I, I think it's a really cool idea. Like this is just a sh- uh, like a good idea for a TV show. It, it is not um, not just oh let's take the game and make a TV show out of it. It's like what world is this game in? Could we also tell other stories and what would be the best way to tell those stories some of them might be best told in a tv show format and that could be really cool because i think the, the world of fallout is really awesome uh, really well fleshed out um also walter goggins is awesome oh he's yeah baby billy he's gonna be he's gonna be great baby billy's gonna crush that uh, oh I think yeah it's gonna be so good i'm stoked on that yeah that that looks that looks really fun um yeah i'm trying to think of other are there any other tv show uh, they got TV shows got adapted in a way that's like good. Like I should also got adapted. M- mention. I personally think a video game adaptation should be a TV show, not a movie, and I think it should be a mini series. Like notably, mm. like this is gonna be whether that's like one or two seasons. I don't think you can have a show that draws out for like eight seasons based on a video game. I think it should be like a tight knit story. Yeah, but I also just I personally lean towards miniseries and TV shows more than I do towards movies. Like Mario yeah. movie, obviously worked out great; it was fine. The Sonic movies also were fun. Yeah, Sonic like, that's fine okay. too. But I just if you're gonna tell a story like Last of Us, couldn't work as a movie. It had to be. A TV yeah, show. I don't think Last of Us could work as a movie. It, you would you would lose a lot. Um, yeah, I, I I mean I don't I don't think uh, it has to be a TV show or has to be a uh, or like I wouldn't prescribe it. It depends on the story you're telling. Like if the story you're telling only takes two hours to tell, you know, don't stretch it mm-hmm. out, right? Um, but if, uh, if the story you're telling takes longer than that, don't also don't try to condense it to a movie either. So it, yeah. it really I guess just depends like on what story you're like, telling. Even like Firewatch could be a movie, you know what I mean? Cause it's a short game. Like, yeah. That could be a movie or like even, uh, I'm trying to think of like smaller indie games that you could turn into movies. I would be into yeah, that. Yeah. Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's. I mean, that's actually yeah, right. That, that's yeah. perfect. That's why they made it a movie. You're right. That's great. That's also yeah. that's also on streaming right now, and I need to watch it still. Ooh, yeah. I, yeah. That's not a game series I ever got caught up in. Again, not not really a horror game guy. So it's too scary for us. Too, too, too scary. spooky for me. Three spooky, yeah. five me. That's a good, really good question, though. Thank you. Yeah. Dave. Were, were there any other good TV show adaptations of video games? I feel like there's like at least one other one, but I guess if I can't think of it, it must not have been that good. Mm, nah. Yeah, I can't think of anything because okay. all like the other ones were movies. I was thinking of. Burger yeah. Champ oh, well, keeps going on this though, so we should we should go on to Bur- Burger Champ's next point because he, he's piggybacking off of Dave's question. He says, "Yeah, oh yeah." When we kind of talked about this a little bit, he says, uh, "Do you think video game adaptations are more attractive to you if they are one to one adaptations of the existing game story or stories, or do you prefer an exploration of the tone and world of your game with new stories and or characters? Would you want the franchise to cho- uh, would you want the franchise you chose for Dave's question to be an adaptation or an integration? That's a I- great question." That is a really good question. I think it would be it would well the way I just described it, it would be an integration because it would be a prequel to the game. Yeah. So it would be an integration. I this question though made me think about the Halo series. Have you been watching Halo at all? I only watched the first couple episodes of the first season, but I hear so, you were saying the second season's not bad. I did say that. Oh no! Uh, did they goof? Yeah. So this is what they're doing with it. Is they're they even said there's like two halo universe canons, you know, and they're doing their own film one or TV one, right? It's mm-hmm. away from the, 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 the games. I liked that initially, but I feel like they're making choices that are straying so far off of it, that they're changing the character of master chief. And I'm mm-hmm. not a fan of that. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I personally kind of thought they were going to, they did the fall of reach. So I thought they were going to kind of come back to the games You know, I was even, like, hoping they would just do a Pillar of Autumn episode. Like, that's what I wanted them to be on the Pillar of Autumn. And just, how cool would that be if they made Mm -hmm. that level into an episode and you just watched it? Uh, But it seems like they're going in a completely different direction now with this. And Master Chief wasn't in his suit for, like, four episodes. Like, that's not what I I thought it was weird they showed his face at all. They really should have gone Mandalorian on that. I mean, I guess they did eventually show the face on Yeah. it would be cool if they did. I just, I, I guess I just am not happy where it was going. They got me really excited with the Fall of Reach stuff. And they, and I thought that, I thought the whole season was going to be Reach. That's what I thought. That's a great like, idea. That's a good story. Like, that's just a legitimately yeah. good story. 
that's what I thought they were going to do. Reach, like, and this is kind of spoilers, but not, re- it's a structure of spoilers, I guess. Not it's of what happens in the episodes. It was two episodes long. Reach. That's what that's it was. That's a whole book? A Fall of yeah. Reach is an entire book? Yeah. So it was, and, and, and just like, it's like they're doing too much and they're jumping from plotline to plotline. And I guess I, I just, I'm still going to watch it because I like Halo. And I like that they have a Halo TV show. And the action sequences are really cool. Like, if you're looking yeah. for some Master Chief beating up the Covenant action, you should watch Halo. But as far as like the structure of the story goes, they're kind of going all over the place. And they're changing things around. They're adding characters. They're killing off characters that I didn't want them to kill off yet. Mm. They're, they're doing stuff where I'm just like, this is just kind of... It seems like they're trying to figure out where they're going <laughs> versus yeah. where they know where they're going. So. Is it like a, like superhero movies that like try to just do like a greatest hits of all the good comic book storylines, and you're just like, there's like like Spider Man three is kind of yeah, like that, where it's just like, there's a bunch much. of bad guys in a two hour movie, and you're like, come on, they're doing way too much because they're point. okay. I guess spoilers for anyone that is like caring about this right now or hasn't watched season two yet. Here's the things they've talked about in season two that they've hinted at. Okay, they had the ring itself. They had the Arbiter. They've had the Flood hinted recently. They is had the Flood the, not in the show yet? I mean, I guess that's not, not until like yet. actual no. Halo, because this is all like before the but first game, right? But they, they hinted it in a different location. It was some different stuff going on. And they did, they've done the Fall of Reach. And on top of that, new things they've added are Magical Witch Space Magic, I guess. I don't know what that, like. It's it's a it's like I think they're kind of going for the reclaimer idea, but they're like going at it in a different way and it's confusing. Mm. And then also on top of that, they have a subplot about a former Spartan's missing son. And it's like a whole it's just unnecessary. It just feels unnecessary. Because they're doing all these things that just feel extra. And I'm part of me wonders if it's a budget thing, like because they can't have that many action sequences, because it's expensive to do action sequences, right? And special effects. Mm. So maybe they have to fill the time with other story stuff where the people are talking, but I'm not into it. You know. Oh, also, uh, Oni being the bad guys. There's a bunch of other stuff going on in that show. There's so much going on uh, that it just feels confusing. Whereas I thought I was just going to watch Master Chief be Master Chief, hmm. the Master Chef himself. That's what the I want. Master Chef himself. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, it's okay. I, I, it's. Not, I mean, I'm not mad about it. it, it it's just. Is what it is, but I'm just uh, think Burger Champ's question got me thinking about it. Yeah, just could have been better. I think for a show like Last of Us, the I know Last of Us they make changes, it's not one to one in that like it's just the script from the game made into a TV show, but like it's more or less like it's the same thing, right? I think that's the right move for that story. Um, I'm sure there are other stories you could tell in that Last of Us world, but truly, when we were watching a story about the Last of Us, we're trying to watch Joel and Ellie and all of those people, right? Like that's the story we want to see, and so adapting that with um, only minor changes as we go or expansions uh, as we saw in, in the episode with uh, uh, Nick Offerman. Uh, Nick Offerman, yeah. Um, and the guy from White Lotus. Uh, that's a great episode. That sort Very of expands great. on a thing that's sort of just hinted at like barely in the game. Like I think that stuff is really cool. Um, but like I wouldn't want to see necessarily another story just told in that world because the world itself actually isn't that interesting. It's just kind of standard. Like, I don't know, zombies happened, right? It's about the characters and the story and the stuff that they go through um, is is the most interesting. So I think that one makes for a better one-to-one thing. Uh, I think people often talk about like a Metal Gear Solid movie or a Metal Gear Solid TV show, uh, and I generally don't agree with that. I think there's a lot of elements of those stories that like are, are video game specific. I'm thinking of things like the Psycho Mantis fight. That's like a really uh, easy thing to point to, but a lot of other stuff is sort of bioshocky like the nature of you know control and the, and like how you as the player have control over a thing and like that that means something in a way that like tv shows are harder to capture um so i don't think metal gear solid would do great there um but yeah you can do anime adaptations of like a lot of jrpgs i think and and the persona games i think all three of uh, three four and five all have anime adaptations that are generally considered to be okay i think i haven't watched them but generally they're i think they're okay um so, Didn't Cyberpunk have a TV show come out? It did, and it, it it was not a story adaptation. It's a it's just another it's a story that happens also in that world, and I think that's one of the reasons why people loved it so much. I only watched a couple episodes of it. I I, I it wasn't bad. I just for whatever reason I just didn't continue with it. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I think that's why people like that so much is because it was just 
it was just another story told in that world. And yeah. the world itself, if cyberpunk, is very cool. Uh, the story of the game it, in the game, I, I haven't played it, so I don't know. But I think that's maybe less compelling than just the world itself. So, Yeah, for sure. I, I think that this is a deep question. See, Burger Champ's getting into it. I love this. So, uh, yeah, I think... I think we are going to, like, these are hard, but I, I think we found something with the Bioshock thing, Tyler. I think that's I think you're thing. onto something. I think the, a Fall of Rapture TV show would be very cool. You could make it a movie, too, I guess. Like, I don't know what the story is being told there, or, or uh, I mean, I know the story, but I don't know how they would do it. Like, you could probably do it as a movie, too, if you wanted to. Um, part I think of a TV me, show would be neat. Part of me thinks the Halo shows previously, where they did them, but the Master Chief was, like, a side character and it was focused on something else was better. You yeah. know what I mean? Like doing it, do an ODST show about oh. the ODSTs. ODST would be great. Do that as a show. Just, I think just cover ODSTs. If a Spartan like master chief shows up in an episode, it's really cool, but then he goes yeah. away and then we're back to the ODS, the ODSTs. Like that sounds yeah. cool. And to it me. would be cool to you. You have the Spartan show up just to show how freaking cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lou, Lou, Spartans Lou, are writing the time down. Do, 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 do. Uh, here, I'll start. So, just how cool like the Spartans are, right? Um, uh, and and we, and show them in contrast with the orbital drop shock troopers, uh, because mm -hmm. that that is one of the things. Like I think people go in and go into ODST feeling like they're going to be a Spartan, and you're not. This is more much more of like a, a low key like stealthy game than it is yeah. like an action game. You can't take very many hits as an ODST in that game. You uh, don't have a shield even. You don't do have you? a shield. Yeah. I don't think so. So uh, I think showing, like having a Spartan show up to show the the contrast between what Spartans can do and then what ODSTs can do, um, that would be cool. I mean, that would be something you would want to have in any adaptation of ODST, I think. But uh, yeah. Yeah. We got to have a that potty would, mouth a button. One. Do we have a potty mouth know. button we can make? Nope. Nope. We're going to do that next time. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I just right. sound like right. I'm trying to sound like your disappointed teacher. We're gonna do that next time, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll put I'll put some money in the swear jar. <laughs> Dude, I I agree with you though. I think the ODSTs being the lack of power there between the two is what makes it so exciting. And having yeah. that showing people because they're people, right? Yeah. Master Chief, you could argue, was a person. Is he still kind of a person, or is he kind of just a war machine? I think that's kind of the whole, you know, main theme of this, like what he is. And so it's yeah. like that's. That's and I don't think they're conveying that with the TV show. Let's move on though. We're going long today. This is for people that want long podcasts. We're doing it. This Let's is go. from James from Colorado. Uh, last episode, you brought back some great memories. So many all nighters fueled by pizza and Surge or Jolt Cola playing four player Goldeneye and Mario Kart. Those memories are great. Along those same lines, what other games do you have great memories of playing in large parties like that? I remember back before Halo 2 and Xbox Live were really make online play a real thing. My friends and I would network three or four Xboxes together and do huge Halo LAN parties at least once a month. Such good times. Also, would you have all-night jam sessions with Rock Band and Guitar Hero for a while as well? Would love to hear some memories like this. Rock Band and Guitar Hero. That's the one I first came to mind immediately rock band gets our hero uh, i definitely had halo 2 uh land parties for sure and the original halo also had had a, a lot of fun uh system link um we used to do land parties at, at my high well maybe they still do but i i would participate in land parties at my high school when i was in high school so this was in like 2004 about um and uh, i have fond memories of playing halo 1 and halo 2 um on xboxes we played a lot of battlefield 1942 specifically the desert combat mod um, played the original Dota a lot. That was fun. Defense um, of the Ancients? Yeah, we defended Ancients. I had no idea what I was doing in that game. <laughs> I don't think anybody did. Uh, that Man, the original Dota mod is rough. We should um, talk about MOBAs and talk about those early MOBAs someday. I yeah, think that would be yeah. like a fun thing to talk about. Because they were yeah, hard to understand, right? Like, yeah, it was Dota... And then, yeah, it's true. That has it's like, Heroes of New Earth, and, uh, uh, I mean, there's Aeon of Strife, which was the original StarCraft mod that, like, I think is kind of unrecognizable as far as MOBAs go, but sort of, like, is on that timeline. It's, like, proto-MOBA. Um, proto-MOBA yeah. is fun to say. Proto-MOBA. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of other games you used to play. Land I... I, mean, I love Jedi Knight, too, also. I played that a lot. Call of Duty, oh, the original Call of Duty, we played LAN parties a lot. That, that episode of The Office where they play Call of Duty on the computers oh, in The yeah? Office. Oh, yeah, that was you? Uh, we, that was us. Yeah, that was us. I love it. I, I have a very fond memory of my dorm room floor. I lived, I was in Stripe Param dorm at WSU, Washington State University. On the other side of well, campus from Stevenson. From, 
from where Stevenson, I, where you were. And I had whole floor Counter-Strike source parties. Everyone bought it. And we had our dorm room doors open, and we were all playing it, and you would kill someone in a gun game, and you'd sprint down the hallway to laugh at them, and then sprint back was the move. And that was oh, fun. Oh, yeah. It was, it was a good time. I, I really liked that. That's like a really fond gaming memory for me. And we were, in, we were in college, too, so it was like we're all like on our own for the first time, and that's just how we all bonded together. Was Those, those gun game servers were great in Source. Yep. I was a big fan. So... That was fun. Yeah. All right. Played some Counter Strike also in college, and uh, a lot of Halo also as well. But Rock uh, Band, college. Rock Band was a vibe. Rock Band was a whole thing. It was like people that don't play games played Rock Band with you. It yep. was really fun in that sense. I love Rock Band. Uh, rock Band made me better at playing the drums. I played drums before Rock Band came out. That's why I was so excited for it. But Rock Band made me better at playing drums in a way that I think guitar guitarists don't get better at playing guitar by playing no. Guitar Hero. No. singers maybe get better at singing when they play rock band i don't know but drums it's like i mean it's pretty one-to-one -one. like i mean there's a lot more to it obviously but uh it, there's a lot of basics you can learn and get better nice. at like cool stuff so yeah do you want to read uh, speaking of halo 2 while we're on that topic uh mm -hmm. you can if you have a modded original xbox you can play halo 2 online again as of like friday like two oh, days yeah. ago from when this podcast is recorded, you can play Halo 2 on your original Xbox online again, which is very cool. Um, you've been able to play Master Chief Collection online for the past 10 years, but um, uh, being able to play the original online again is neat. Uh, on if you PC, want to play yeah. on original hardware, like on an Xbox, yeah. right? Yeah, That's and this cool. isn't like like the uh, the system link tricks you've been able to do since those games came out where you like run a com program on your computer and like system link and like that's how you're playing online. This is like actual recreation of Xbox Live matchmaking, clans, uh, friend lists and stuff or most of that stuff I think is, is in there. I know they're, it's beta testing so I don't know what features are missing but uh, it, it works now so I might fire that up after we're done here honestly. I love that. That's great. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to cover uh, Joel's last Joel from Texas's last question here uh yeah well we do have this one from squirrel mancer speaking oh, on the topic did of I, MOBAs. Did, did i miss one did i miss we one? Did, yeah I I what would your dream moba slash hero shooter that takes place in an existing universe be uh personally i would love to see a rainbow six siege slash valorant style metal gear solid game like a tactical Ooh. shooter metal gear solid that's kind of what metal gear online was yeah that's a really good question yeah, I think the one that I always talked about wanting uh, for, for like the, the MOBA genre was like a Pokemon MOBA, which exists now. Pokemon Unite is very fun and kind of scratches that itch. I, uh, it didn't quite do ex everything I wanted, but I think it is neat. Um, otherwise, I don't know. I can't really think of anything. I think Pokemon yeah. Unite was fun, though. I'm trying to think of things you could do that have like enough. I mean, did they ever do like a Marvel or a DC MOBA? Because there's so many characters. Yes, it's like, DC. It's like asking. Uh, DC Infinite Crisis. They made a game called Infinite Crisis that was a DC MOBA. Uh, it was. It did not. It didn't last very long. I played a little bit of it though because I thought it was a neat idea of being able to like play all these superheroes and stuff. Um, Marvel. I don't think ever had a MOBA, but they did have the Marvel Heroes game that was like a Diablo mm -hmm. kind of thing. That was kind of fun, but that's also shut down. I think it's back again. I think maybe there's some fan servers up, or maybe they brought it back. I don't know. But I just think uh, about how those games have th those games. Those two properties have so many characters yeah that they would make the moba work because i feel like games that are successful mobas have a lot of characters and that's what makes it like balanced because there's so many things you can choose from and yeah. you need that there so that's kind of where i would go part of me wants like a star wars moba or oh uh, yeah you could do that little like ewoks when, are like the the yeah creeps. <laughs> or like a lord of the rings moba like that'd be they made cool. one of those for console they did Yep. Uh, okay. Something something Middle Earth, which every Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle Earth? So, uh, I don't think it was called that. I think it was something else. Uh, Lord of it. the Rings MOBA. Uh, Guardians of Middle Earth. Guardians of Middle Earth. Uh, yeah, should... and it was it was uh, console-focused. I think it, it came out on PCs also, but it was console-focused. Uh, and it's so like people were kind of excited for it for that. And I think it was generally well-received, but people just didn't play it. Because we forget, like, before... The obsession with battle royales. There was an obsession with MOBAs. Yeah, there was a, that there was, was a the brief trend period a of time. There. Yeah, where MOBAs were the thing. So, I forget about that. That's that's funny. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna read Joel's. Well, actually, I'm gonna read Joel's, and then I'm gonna read the last thing here as well from another Matt in Japan. Okay. So, okay. Joel from Texas says, "Howdy." Actually, he says, "H O W D Y." <laughs> Joel Howdy. from Texas. 
has returned from the dreaded shadow realm known as content creation to participate in the most prestigious events, the mailbag. Truly an honor to be a part of this. Firstly, I would like to yet again recommend covering Disney games since Epic Mickey Rebrushed got announced and I really want to see that one covered. Also, y'all recently covered Polybius and in the spirit of video game conspiracies, wanted to bring up the many rumors that have in recent years merged into a singular meme of every copy of Mario 64 is personalized. I'd describe it, but that's a very long subject, and there are several iceberg videos on YouTube about it anyway. Best wishes, Joel, hero of Metopia. <laughs> I didn't know about this rumor. Uh, this, uh, I've, yeah, theory. I've I've heard that, like, creepy, I guess not creepy pasta, but, like, that conspiracy theory of, like, every mario 64 cartridge is personalized i've heard that's literally all i know about it though um i feel like i did i looked into it at one point but it's a pretty old meme at this point but yeah i'm gonna go through after the those. episode and pull all these and put them in the episode ideas notes so we'll have yeah. them in there for one time the last thing we need to talk about today though our friend matt in japan we put out the matt signal right him and i got into contact a, a, a while ago and he found out that in Japan, Japanese copies of Snowboard Kids are very affordable. So I now have both Snowboard Kids 1 and Snowboard Kids 2, the Japanese versions, here. So I have it covered now. This doesn't count for me because I still want to get the U.S. version of Snowboard Kids 2, but I am able to play them now here. I haven't region lo- unlocked my... N64 yet. Funny story, it's just a piece of plastic you remove, and then you can play whatever (laughs) games you want. Uh, But I haven't done that yet, but I am excited to play these, and thank you so much, Matt, for getting them. He also sent me another care package, which is this CD for a band that I do not know anything about. Uh, Oh, yeah, MP48. You know them? Yeah. Oh, what? That's that's a big fan. Okay, because I'm excited about it. I I, I haven't opened it yet, because I realized I don't think I have a CD player. (laughs) I might just I I might just have to Google them and YouTube it and try to find a version of this album on YouTube and listen to it and keep the CD sealed for Pristine. for 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 perfect collector's edition stuff. But thank you so much, Matt, for getting this stuff for me. I appreciate it. I yeah, he was like, I have the order. I'm like, I will send you the PayPal. Here you go. Let's do this. And then these came to me. Also, getting a package like a mail package from another country is very exciting. Because, like, mm-hmm. all the other stuff, like, the, the packing slip, I saved all of it because I thought it was really cool. <laughs> so thank you so much, Matt, for doing that. But with that, that's all of our questions. We had so many this episode, but we covered it. Mm-hmm. Tyler, what have you been playing? It is only Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I am, I would estimate maybe 80% of the way through the game. I just got to the Gungaga region, if uh, any other Final Fantasy VII knowers are out there. Um, that's where I'm at. I think that's pretty close to the end of Rebirth. Uh, about 30 hours in, I understand it's like 30, 40, 50 hours. Um, I've been doing a lot of side stuff, although as I get closer to the end of the game, I'm doing a lot less uh, side stuff. Um, I did all the side stuff in Calm and all the side stuff in Junon. Um, so, and, and then now I'm in the, the Corel is after that, and then the Gungaga region. I didn't do everything in Corel, and I have, I've just got to Gungaga, so... That's where I'm at. That's really it. I've been playing that pretty much every night, consistently putting in an hour or two every night. Um, and that's that's it, I think. Uh, hey, that's great. You found a game you love. You're into it. There's nothing wrong with that. I yeah, I can't wait to finish it and get back to Persona 3 Reload. You're doing uh, some heavy JRPGing in 2024. I am. And, and part of me really wants to fire up the original FF7 again. Because, like, as I play through Rebirth, and I love it. I love Rebirth so much, but there's a lot of, like, oh, yeah, I really want to go just check out the old one again, too. That's great. So, I'm happy for What have you been playing? Ooh, so I beat Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun yesterday. I beat that okay. game last night. Boomer Shooter, super fun. It gets challenging at times. The last boss fight, I would say, is pretty, pretty crazy. I loved it a lot, though fun time it's funny because you just beat it and they're like good job for the emperor and then you're just kind of done <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's really fun it's like it's on game pass it's a like i was gonna pay for it i was gonna buy the game and they put it on game pass and i'm like great so i got to play it through it um great soundtrack it's got all like that rock like metal soundtrack in it it's just it just does i almost said rock and roll like an old man oh my <laughs> gosh tyler uh, i had so much fun playing that but 
I am obsessed with Helldivers. I dive every day for Super Earth. I am regularly now, I will play, I have unlocked the Helldiver difficulty, as in I have played an impossible, the ninth level, like the eighth level to get to the ninth level, the highest level of difficulty. I usually play on suicide difficulty because that's the the easiest one that you can get the super rare samples to upgrade mm. your equipment. But I'm loving it. I love the team aspect of it. I love putting the game on like medium and then SOS helping random people in their game because I've gotten so much stuff that I can pretty much take care of anything. I could probably solo a medium if I need to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, not to brag, but. You know, I feel like I've put. But a you're lot pretty of good at hell. I put a lot of. I put like over 50 hours in it at this point. I feel pretty good about myself. But this is a call to anyone that's listening. If you want to play Hell Divers, tag me in the uh, like. Yeah, what do we have? I think it's like play. Let's play games or whatever it's called. Yeah, in the we Discord. have a let's play games channel. Tag me in that. Let me know. I play on PC. Let me know what you play on and if you want to play, and then we'll figure out a way to add each other at some point. Um, and we'll play Helldivers because I am all in. Tyler's played it with me, but he's seen yeah, Final I Fantasy. Yeah, I do enjoy it. Yeah, I've been stuck on Final Fantasy, I, but I, I will get back to some some hell diving, uh, when when I'm done Dude, with that. Dude, there's nothing like getting the, the crazy gear you get. Like I've been obsessed with the rail cannon strike because it, chargers are really annoying. I would argue that chargers are more annoying than Vile Titans in a way, which are the, the big bugs. And I throw my rail cannon strike. It's just a one hit. It's always satisfying. It always feels good. Also, the robots in that game, the automatons, uh, they they sing. Do you know they sing? No, I've only they, ever fought bugs in that game. Go into if you're okay. If you play Hell Divers and you're listening right now, go into a trivial automaton match so that way you're on the easiest game mode. Walk around, look for a patrol, and just kind of wait and follow them, and they will start chant singing about <laughs> Cyberstan. And like how <laughs> it just proves once again that we're the baddies. You know what I mean? It's like, it's such a fun thing. Of, I, I just love the game so much. I love what they're doing with the emergent storytelling. I, I'm, I'm, I haven't been this jazzed about a game in a while. And there's been a lot of hype games this year, like Pal World, uh, Lethal Company, but this one is just really doing it for me. So that's where I'm at right now. But Tyler, I think that's it, right? We did it. I think we did it. Whew. Marathon episode. We got a lot of mailbag stuff going on. So if you want to support us, you can go to codexhistorypodcast.net. Uh, no, codexpodcast.net is our website. At Codex History, or Codex History Podcast at gmail.com is our email. <laughs> Apologies. Yes. I made both of those things. I should know the names of them. <laughs> uh, but go to codexpodcast.net has everything you need if you want to get in contact with us or join our Discord or look at our Trello boards or look at our Twitters or whatever. And with that... We'll be back next week. I don't know what we're talking about. It's a video game one. We're going to talk about a video game, probably. Yeah, we're, I think next week we'll, we'll talk about video games. We'll talk about video games for sure. Yeah, All right. Probably. Yeah, sure. So with that, do you want to say bye to everybody? Yeah. Goodbye, everybody.